Thing is on. Welcome, everyone. This is May the 5th, 2023. It's the GitLab plugin modernization. Welcome to the community meeting. All right. So, first stop was a meeting with all team members to be sure we know each other and show personal expectations and goals. Let's start that. So, Harsh, you want to go first? Tell us yeah, something about Harsh. yourself, etc. I'm currently a freshman, I'm currently a freshman at uh, in an institute of technology, Kanpur, and I'm actually eager to code. I actually started learning Java from January during the midst of my exams. And I started finding organizations, I read a bit of books and I found Jenkins and I thought that it would be better to learn it. And then I started contributing and I got into GSOC somehow. I was not even expecting it, but yeah, grateful. Great. Welcome to the project. We're delighted to have you here. Freyam, you want to go next? Right. Uh, I, I would just like to point out uh, that I love his uh, enthusiasm as well. Like, you know, uh, the fact that like he's, he's, so, he's so excited to be here. And at the same time, uh, yeah, so who am I? Uh, I'm Freyam. Uh, I'm going to be a dad uh, in this project as well. Uh, I don't really have any expectations from you. I mean, I obviously do have some like those baseline expectations where like that you should fall in love with open source, that you have to complete the project within the set amount of time. But at the same time, I have this one very specific uh, expectation that is... Uh, just co communicate with us because I think uh, this is the most important part of, about the entire project. And this is something uh, which is going to help you throughout the career. It's not just for the next two months, next three months. It's also going to help you throughout your whole life. So, yeah, that's kind of about it. If you ever have any, like, uh, like even the smallest of the questions, uh, feel free to ask any of us. Yeah. Thanks, Freyam. Chris, do you want to go ahead next? Yep, sure. So my name is Chris. I'm based in Hong Kong currently, and uh, I'm a software engineer uh, professionally for at least, I say, three years. And um, I think for expectations, I just want to have a successful outcome, and I'll do anything possible to assist in that goal. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris. So I'm Mark. Uh, I'm a uh... I've been doing software for a while, and uh, I'm very interested in Git. Uh, I've got some interest in the Git hosting providers because of my interest in Git, and not as deeply experienced with GitLab as I'd like to be. So I'm going to use this project to be sure that I learn more, that I understand better, that I've ex done some exploration. I'll use it to be sure that I'm configured with interesting configurations in my Jenkins test environments so that Harsh, when you create some change, I'll be able to look at that change, read it from the code perspective, and then deploy it into my production environment and complain to you if it's broken. And that's okay. We're going to have those conversations. Uh, I think my primary role will be one, code, re code review, so that we can see and discussion review on things that you, how you're approaching things, which things you're doing, when, et cetera. You're the implementer and we're here to help, um, but that help from my case will probably be strongly oriented on testing to be sure that I understand what you're doing. And then on code review, where code review is, is vital and healthy, Chris has also got lots of experience with the Git, the GitLab plugin, and we'll rely on his help there as well. Looking forward to Freyam also being part of that review process. Any any questions from anyone on any of the things that have been said so far? Yeah. So, what would you like to do first? Uh, the code base that I'm going to write is it going to be test driven development, or is it, or should I try to make the thing work in production first and then adapt those tests. Oh, I love questions like that. That's the way you're trying to seduce me with really good questions. Very good, Harsh, <laughs> way to go. All right, so I am I am strongly in favor of test-driven development and have okay. been repeatedly proven that I probably don't do enough of it. So, so even as strongly as I believe in test-driven development, I want to do more of it. However, and this is the dangerous however, I have to confess openly that the Jenkins code base sometimes is not well suited to test driven development. And it is our ultimate goal is deliver real value to users. So that's the first thing we want to be sure it works. 
I love having tests. I love having, I, I grumble if we get new code that has no tests to check it, right? Because that, that makes me worry, oh, now I've got to test it interactively and I have to test it interactively every time we release a new version. And, and so I like tests because they give us confidence that we can release the next version and the next version and the next version and we didn't regress it. Now, that was kind of a cheat answer, Harsh, because when I say I like test-driven development and I've done presentations on test-driven development and I live test-driven development personally, still sometimes you may find in the Jenkins code base that's really uncomfortable. And, and you'll, you may have to ask for help or say, hey, I don't know what to do with this. How do I test this thing? And we as mentors may have to do some research as well to find ways to do test-driven development in what is fundamentally an integration machine, right? Jenkins is an integration engine. And the word integration hints that there's a lot of integration tests that happen, right? It's it's not well, oftentimes well suited to just simple unit testing. You've got to do integration or I have tests in the Git plugin that I maintain that actively call production servers, right? I call right to github.com and ask questions. And that is a total cheat in test-driven development, but I do it anyway because I need it. Did that answer your question? Yeah, pretty much. You right. love interactive testing, that's for sure. Oh, well, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so test-driven development is certainly, I consider test-driven ne development necessary, but not sufficient, right? Yeah. You must have checked interactively. It, it's the Jenkins code base is just too complicated for us to think that we can do something purely with automated tests and it will just magically work. I couldn't agree more. Now, now, I guess one other area is I really like having online help with every single change. So it, with every, every addition of a new capability, we need to be sure it has online help for it because users read it and we need to be sure that we document it. So, so again, those are places where it's surprisingly important that we document this because other people are going to want to use it. So a design document has to be created or something? I'm not as worried about a design document. I think your, your, your design document has already been, been very nicely started in your project plan. And that's, that's great. I'm not worried about individual design documents for steps along the way. The, the working code is much more important than, than writing about code. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah, pretty much, yes. Okay. Chris or Freyam, do you want to give a different opinion or an alternate opinion? I'm actually a pro test driven as well. Uh, I I just feel that uh, it just makes it very easy in the long term as well. I think like uh, as your code base actually evolves uh, throughout the years, it just it just keeps, I mean, it's, it's just easy to keep tra track of all the changes and all the updates that are happening all the time. Yeah, so I'm also pro test driven. Chris. But yeah, at the same time, at the same, just one, one, one more thing. At the same time, uh, as you said, it is quite uncomfortable at times. So I think there's this trade-off as well to keep in mind. But I, I, I guess like overall, if I think uh, we should always just like uh, try it out first. And then if it if, if it actually creates this uh, friction, in that case, then you can just like uh, adopt a much simpler way at that point. Good. Very good. Yeah. Chris, you're next. Okay, so I think like unit tasks are definitely necessary, but for integration tasks, we should um, try to do just what's needed because like otherwise uh, it might slow down the whole like application. So that's what, not what we want. Yeah. Good point. Also, uh, could you actually uh, share the uh, like the document with, with us? So like even uh, we will have access to it. Sorry, ask your question again, Frey. I didn't no, quite uh, hear it. Uh, I was asking uh, for the access uh, for, for, uh, to, 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 to this Google Doc document. It's Google Doc, can you share it? The Google Doc. Oh, oh yeah, this yeah. one, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I thought that I had, uh, obviously I had not. Let's get this. So I really like for these documents to be public. So let's make it first that anyone can read it. And then we'll grant Freyam. Harsh. Chris. Each of you will be made.
There. Good. Thank you. Awesome. And you're welcome to edit it during the meeting, even. Okay. All right. So, um, communication channels, next topic. Uh, I assume everyone's okay if we go ahead with Gitter Chat in the GitLab plugins, uh, in the GitLab plugin chat channel where we've been chatting already. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Next, clarify sync and asynchronous communication methods. So, um, Harsh, I think, ask a question. Ask questions in the in the in the chat channel. Right. If they are and. If they are even remotely close to being workable publicly, ask them there. That way others can learn from them. Um, and we'll answer there. That way we don't have a, a rigorous requirement for synchronous communication. I prefer to have at least one session a week where we're synchronous that we can so that we can meet together to be sure that we talk and discuss. Is that okay for the rest of you? Yeah, fine. Yep. And let's look for a time. Does this time work for everyone in general, or is this a bad time for the uh, Friday? Maybe a time when you wish you were having a, a beverage or something. And so I, I don't know if your 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 character is like mine. So. Does this time work? Or would you prefer a different time and day? No, this time is actually fine for me because I have classes in the morning. So it's actually pretty good timing. Okay. All right. So, and Chris, Freyam, for you? It works for us. I mean, at least it works for me as well. Yeah. Works. Yeah. Okay, great. So I will schedule Friday at this time at same time. Mark scheduled a session, the repeating session. Great, excellent. Now, uh, unavailability, so holidays, exams, etc. So, um, Harsh, I believe you started this in the in the project plan, and we should continue it there. Yeah, I actually mentioned all those uh, the breaks which I'll require in the project proposal. And it's not like I won't be working on that on these times, but my workload will be reduced, like from 35 to 40 hours to around 20 -ish hours, because I won't be able to give my full time to it because of exam. Mm -hmm. That's and that's fine. That is very reasonable. Okay, good. Now, if one of you could grab me a link to the project proposal, I'd love to yeah. paste it, or you could paste it in there. Okay, so I think we're ready now for, on the what side, agree and define the tasks and deliverables. So this is where I think, Harsh, we look to you to, during this next two or three week period, we do one more round of looking at using your project proposal to identify exactly what will happen when. Detailed deliverables. Right. Oh, very good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now the there are some key some key things here in terms of deliverables. John Mark in this original document called them soft deliverables. I'm not comfortable calling them soft at all. These are mandatory deliverables that we absolutely must have during this time. It's it's kind of him to use the word soft, but it's crucial for me. And I think for you, Harsh, that you del you complete these pieces because it's very, it becomes very clear to everyone that they know who you are that you're that you're getting started here's what you've got so these first two in particular i'd like to see within the next week if your time will allow it yeah fine. okay so so now the the challenge here is let's see if i can find this this one is actually not the right link so i'm going to put a link to the page because we allowed an empty page to go in as part of the gsoc announcement 
but we absolutely don't want that page to stay empty for any extended period. So this page, I think, is the one that will show up as empty. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. So Harsh, this is the one your your task is to assure that this thing is current, up to date, et cetera. Oh, and it's already got the project. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Fram. Thanks very much. All right, and we need you to update date your create and update a page for your contributor. So this, this thing needs to be replaced by a real author page that talks about who you are, your picture, etc. comfortable with those two yeah okay great all right okay and then stretch goals this is one i feel like could we set our goal that next week in our meeting we will review the project plan in detail with you harsh giving you a chance to prepare to do one review of it before we're ready for before we review it next friday and we will talk it in depth next friday as make that the primary focus of next friday's meeting uh, I kind of have a problem with this because I have my exams from next Friday, actually. Uh, my oh. exams are starting from 8th. I wrote in the proposal from 7th to, I guess, 14th. Like, so it can be a bit messy there. Okay, so, well, then let's not, let's, shall we, are the other mentors okay? Let's push that out one more week. You knew you were going to be in exams. Yeah. Let's not yeah, put yeah. your, you've already got enough pressure with exams. So review in two weeks. Yeah, that would be fine, actually. Should we pl plan to skip next week's meeting so that we're not disrupting your exam schedule? No, 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 no that's not a problem. You're okay meeting. You can have meetings. Weeks. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, good. So meet next week, except that Harsh, Harsh is focused on exams this week. So will you be able to complete these two items? The Yeah, where, those the, things I'll be able to complete. These two, you can do those this week. Yeah. Or, or before we meet next week. Yeah. Great. All right. Okay. Okay. So two weeks. Very, very good. And this, all right. Anything else in the what section that, that we need to discuss? About the blog posts, should I write it now or at the end of the community bonding period? So let's see. So the actually the so this is the starting, this is the blog post that John Mark. Nope, nope. So maybe, well, let's see. Chris, help me with this one. I think we've had contributors do a midterm blog post and an end, but not a start blog post. Or did we also do a start blog post? I don't remember, Harsh. It's a good question. I don't think it's a start blog post. It should be an end blog post. Yeah, let, let me let me do a quick check to see see on on some of some past ones. For instance, Harshi Chopra, where is let's do this one. Chopra. I think, nope, nope, that's not. Oh, there's an author's page, isn't there, Chris? Yep. So if I click this, and instead of there, go like this. Oh, and oh. isn't this good looking? Somebody has done a very good job. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's, let's look for Rishab. Nope, Arshit. Okay, Harshit Chopra. So let's see what, what Harshit wrote. So Harshit only did one blog post. So yeah, the... one. go ahead, Chris. We only had one last year, too. Okay, so others, let's see. Shruti, I think, was another one, one blog post. Okay, and others, others, others. You can try Yiming. 
Oh, Yiming. Yes, Yiming is an excellent choice, right? Yiming may have done two. That's very good. So Yiming. Oh, uh, G O N G. G. Ah, okay, good. And where is the highlighted one? Ah, there it is. Okay, got it. Again, okay, one. All right, so I think the answer there is that would be an end of blog, end of a wrap up blog post at the end. So no need for a blog post immediately. Now, I think it would be healthy if we had you do a midterm blog post, but the minimum is the end of blog and you'll you'll absolutely have to do a midterm presentation and absolutely do an end of end of cycle blog post. If you did a midterm blog post, it can help you organize your presentation. Okay. Yeah. And any other questions on the what? All right. Next topic then is I the how we. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Because like, is is it like is it your mom's suggestion that we add a, like a before we start blog post this year? I I wonder if the, I I had assumed what he meant here was that we need him to update his author page yep and the present the present the project page but i wasn't a, assuming a before yeah. we start blog post but i guess we he, we could should we ask john mark yeah we should ask but i think his idea is like just to make sure we have like the contributor page and the presentation oh just the project page okay so two pages should that was my assumption. So, yeah. but, but I think it's worth asking. Let's ask, ask him if he wants a starting blog. If he, if he not wants, he may say, yes, I want it. No, that's not, not what we want. No, if no, he no. requires a starting. Yeah. Yep. He would say he wants it. Yeah. Okay, good. Anything else on the what topics? Okay, then on the how topic, so define and put in place the technical logistics, so issue tracker. Thus far, the GitLab plugin has been tracking its issues in Git, GitHub, if I remember correctly, Chris, is that right? Yes, here we go. And it has lots of them. So I propose we continue that. Any objections? No. Good, good choice. Git repository to use the same. Okay, work environment. Uh, so Harsh, I assume you've got a development environment, at least yeah. Linux-based or Windows-based, one of the two. Help the rest of us, which is it? Are you Linux, Windows, or Mac OS user? Mac OS. Oh, oh, very good, okay. All right, so, and uh, Mark is using Windows and Linux. Uh, Freyam, what's your preferred development environment? I actually have uh, all three as well. Uh, I have all, all three of them. I, I use all of them at once. Okay, and Chris? That's Mac. Good, all right. So we have we have a nice platform mix. That's very healthy. Great, all right. Now, Harsh, I assume you have Docker on your Mac OS machine. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, good, all right. And I've got Docker on all of mine. I assume Freyam and Chris likewise? Yep. Okay, good. All right. Okay, how and where meeting notes or recording or recordings are kept. So I propose meeting notes in this document. Yep. And if you're okay with it, recordings posted to the Jenkins YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. After meetings are complete. Okay. Uh, Mark to post them. Mark has a bunch that he hasn't posted yet. I've got a lot to do. Is that okay for the rest of you? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Okay. So bonding period deliverables. GSOC biographies on Jenkins.io. So yes, this is with a picture, please. Right, so it should look something like, well, something like this one.
or this one. Okay, this one has a picture. Harsh, you're okay with that, I assume? Yep. All right, and project page on Jenkins.io updated. Yes, link to the biography. Upgrade the update the to be described section. So that's this, all of this. And it, it, this is effectively a transposing and possibly simplification of your project plan. And if you could put in there that we will be meeting every Friday at the time we've agreed to, that's great. And a link to the Gitter channel and the project proposal. Oh yes, notice here it's the submitted project proposal. So if, if we have to archive a copy of the PDF, that's, that's great. I don't remember how that's been done in the past, Harsh. It may be simplest to, to save a, an archived copy of the PDF of your proposal. Leave it up to you to decide. And then the current project project plan. Okay, and this one, how shall we do? What's the, in the past, I've preferred to have project plans that were in a Google Doc that we could revise and refine. But that doesn't make for a really easy way to track history. Are you okay if we use Google Doc for that? Or do you want to do something more formal, put it in the GitHub repository, et cetera? Yeah, we can use the wiki. Oh, oh, interesting. I Yeah, is there a wiki enabled on? Oh, there is. I think I also used it before. Yeah, some of those used it before. So it's like we have migration guides and set up example. Yeah. Okay. So shall we, shall we agree that we'll use, we'll use the wiki on the GitLab plugin repository. Now, Harsh, do you have permission to, to create new pages on this, on this repository, or is it only maintainers that are allowed to, could you check that you can create a, uh, I never did it tried. Have any option of creating something here? You say you cannot create something there. I don't see any option of doing that. So the new page button in the top right is not available for you. No, it's not. Okay. All right. So wiki won't work. Okay. Oh, uh, hang on. I just changed the settings because I I always try to access to it earlier. So I just changed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you can we can grant. Permission um, too harsh without making him a maintainer. It's like uh, if I give permission, it would be for everyone, uh, not just too harsh. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not sure we want to go that far. I haven't looked to see what the permissions are on the wiki. So the, the. Yeah, I. Okay, so it when was you public before, before I joined, before I become a maintainer, it was public before. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so then if it was public before and it wasn't being spammed horribly, then yeah. why don't we go ahead and make it public again? Yeah. In if it becomes a problem, we 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 bring we reduce the permissions. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, harsh. Let's have Chris make that change now. How do you make that change, Chris? Is that in That's settings? Specific. So it's like, yeah, it's insane. So it's like you go to general and you and scroll down to features. The first one should be wikis. So you scroll said... down here, scroll, no, Ransai. Ransai. So you go down, Ransai, general. Scroll down. So, so features. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you you clicked this checkbox to allow others to edit. Yep, you can do. Yeah. 
Perfect. Okay. So, Harsh, could you try now to see if you can create a page on the wiki? Yeah, we just have a proper page for the project. Yeah, I got a new page option. Great. Okay. So your task then is to let's let's try it this way. I've never used a, a, a GitHub wiki before. Let's try it and see how it works for us. Okay, so here's the wiki. Great. Very good. Okay, if that didn't work for us, we can always switch to a Google Doc. Yep. All right. And then, oh, okay, nope. So John Mark has answered our question. He really is expecting a blog post to present the project and the contributors. So I assume this is an end of end of community bonding deliverable so community bonding period help yeah. me with the timeline chris when does it end it's a month from now so let me check again 27 uh, 28th yeah 28 27. okay so so post the blog before the end of community bonding that gives you plenty of time, Harsh, without without crushing you under the load of exams that you've got coming up. Great. Okay. All right. So we've answered one of our questions then. Very good. Where was the question? It was what? JMM. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So we can it up. Okay. We're set. Yep. Any other topics we want to discuss today? Yeah, so I had a question about Git workflow. So how are the branches going to be set up? Like, are there going to be release branches, feature branches, and master branch on the GitHub? So, Good question. So Git workflow. So let's, let's put it in as a question. Questions, right? How, what is the, what is the branching pattern? That's a good question for us to discuss here because I've got an opinion, but I wanted to check with Chris and, and what is the release pattern? All right. So on the branching pattern right now, the working assumption is, is the master branch is the source branch for all releases. As far as I can tell, Chris, right. And pull requests are submitted from personal repos to the master branch on the central repo. Yep. Did I say that right, Chris? Yep, that's correct. So I would prefer to retain that branching pattern, Harsh, where we keep it nice and simple. No, no extra branches, just we merge to master when we believe it's ready and we try to do merges to master very frequently. So we, we want you to do small chunks of work that we can, we can roll out so that we can do incremental releases as well. Okay. I got a question though for, for this project, like for the, repla uh, like for replacing one of the, like the, uh, the, the rest, uh, hang on. What's that called? I don't, I all of a sudden I don't remember what it's called. Um, rest easy. Yeah, the West Easy, like for for yeah. Facebook West Easy, like um, well, is it feasible if we open a new branch and commit to that one and continuously pulling from the master branch? Would that be more workable, or would that be more advisable to just submit PRs to the master branch right away? My my preference personally is to not have long lived branches because they tempt me to make other choices which are flawed okay. so i i i it's 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 hard work to find ways to assure that each step is incremental and can be released but i think it's worth the hard work because it, it, at least in the past when i've cho chosen to use long lived branches i've had very poor experiences with the results from it okay okay cool yeah so and it's a, so it's a series of small steps each making some small progress towards the final goal. Okay. 
uh, and as a matter of operating plan, no breaking compatibility, don't break compatibility, right? Don't, dest don't destroy functionality. Now, those are very famous words to say, and they're very, as far as I can tell, very challenging to do. There's a lot of learning to go through that process. And so, Harsh, don't be shy as we as we talk through these things together. We're going to have to find together what, what sequence of steps should be taken to do this the most reasonably. Anything else on the branching pattern? Okay, so then the next question, what's the release pattern? Today, we're using semantic versioning. So, so that means uh, x.y.z, where the x version means we were breaking, the y version means we did a, a, a bug fix or functional change, and the z is no no change in functionality, but it, uh, otherwise an improvement. Are you okay if we continue semantic versioning? The other alternative alternative would be um, continuous delivery, what's called JEP 229, which uses a uses a single version number that is the count of commits in the pull request plus a uh, SHA-1 hash. I'm biased towards this one, but Chris, I know you haven't, <clears throat> haven't transitioned the repository to it. Was there a reason you chose not to do it? You felt like, hey, not ready to do that? Because I'm used to semantic versioning, that's why. <laughs> okay, all right. We could change it though, if that's what you prefer. I, I'm I'm open to I'm open to either. So harsh, harsh. This is a this is a fun software engineering question. I'd say let's let's leave it as it is for today, and let's see how it evolves in our discussions. That way, harsh, you'll hear us as Mark and Chris have the discussion back and forth, ooh, I like it for this reason, I don't like it for that reason. And then as a group, we'll decide as we go forward. We'll stay with the current pattern for now. Hi. Great. Any other questions before we end? Yeah, so the GitLab plugin currently supports uh, GitLab version, a API version three also, so does, requires to be removed during the migration or we are keeping the version three because the warnings, uh, the GitLab 4J has some warnings written there that this thing, the version three will be discontinued. So what's your thought about that? Good, good thing. So which GitLab API version will we support? And I think there, let's put that as a separate question. Because I need to have some do some more research to to understand. So the Jenkins project has a general a general pattern that Jenkins does not support um, a component does not yes yeah, support support a component if the upstream vendor does not support it, and therefore if GitLab is dropping support for API v3. Dropped, I think, from What's that? Actually, it has already dropped, I think, from 2019, I guess. Okay, all right. Uh, then, then Jenkins should transition away from it, right? So we should be using, we should be using GitLab API v4 or v5, whatever their, their API. Yeah, v4. Great. So are you are you okay with that? And Chris, does that work for you all right? Yeah, sure. 
that so so that feels like that's part of this project to be sure that we as part of this transition use the current the new api not the old api yeah so the code related to ordinal thing which was set up by the author which actually decided the order that the gitlab version 4 will be implemented first and then the gitlab api version 3 will be tested so i think that code will be ripped off from the code base great all right is there an, is there any other purpose for this ordinal thing that i saw in the code base that detail i don't know i'll have to look at that separately it's a that's a that's a question i don't have an answer for it chris if you've got an answer you're welcome to share it no not yet I don't okay have an yeah that's fine most probably it was for that order so great we've run out of time is there anything else before we conclude i'm not left with any questions now all right so you've got your action as items harsh. I've got my action items. We'll meet again in a week. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Harsh. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.